Alien mouths hung open in shock as Vincent Adams, the human student, strode fearlessly off the stage, his fiery speech still searing the air. The Galactic Academy's auditorium hummed with tension as students took their seats for the final Xenodiplomacy presentations. The diverse crowd of humans and extraterrestrials whispered nervously. They all knew the gravity of this moment. An elite panel of alien diplomats, including the notorious Kobali ambassador Horus, sat in judgment. Their evaluations today would make or break careers before they even began. Failure was not an option for Vincent Adams. The rebellious human prodigy stepped up to the podium, his gaze fixed on Horace's condescending sneer. Vincent knew his people's future hinged on this speech. Humanity was the galaxy's newcomer, constantly belittled and underestimated by the ancient alien powers. They dismissed humans as primitive upstarts, unfit for a seat at the galactic table. But today, Vincent would prove them dead wrong. He started conventionally, extolling the virtues of interspecies cooperation. But then Vincent went off script. His voice rose with righteous anger as he laid bare the ugly truths the aliens wanted buried. He denounced the Kabali's brutal conquests and the other races' complicity in their crimes. He demanded real change, not empty platitudes. The human's words shattered the auditorium's stunned silence. Horus leapt to his feet, eyes blazing with fury. But Vincent stood his ground, unwavering. He was a young human standing alone against the galaxy's entrenched powers. It was a defining moment for his species. Would they remain marginalized and downtrodden, or would they rise up and forge their own destiny among the stars? As the other alien diplomats erupted in an uproar, Vincent held his head high. He had just lit the spark of a revolution. What happened next would decide humanity's fate. Within hours, Vincent's speech was being broadcast on every screen and speaker across the galaxy. The human's bold words had struck a nerve. Trillions of sapients watched and listened, transfixed, as Vincent denounced the Kobali's brutal conquests and demanded change. Aboard his gleaming warship, Horus slammed a fist on his command chair, cracking the rigid metal. The Kobali ambassador's eyes blazed with fury as he watched the recording of Vincent's speech, that filthy human dares slander the Kobali name? Horus roared. He jabbed a clawed finger at his communications officer. Contact the Galactic Council immediately. I want an emergency session convened to address this human's lies. The Council, ever cautious of offending the mighty Kobali, hastily summoned Vincent to appear before them and defend his inflammatory statements. Vincent strode into the Grand Council chamber flanked by a small entourage of human and alien allies who had been swayed by his fiery rhetoric. Horus was there waiting for him, his reptilian features twisted with rage. You stand accused of slandering the great Kabali race, human, the ambassador snarled. What do you say in your defense? Vincent met Horus's furious gaze calmly. I spoke only the truth, ambassador, the truth you and your kind have tried to bury. With that, Vincent signaled to his companions. They came forward bearing a mountain of evidence condemning the Kobali, classified documents detailing massacres and oppression, hollow recordings of sobbing witnesses from brutalized worlds, and more. As the proof of Kobali crimes spilled out before the council, a ripple of unease spread through the chamber. Horus and his lackeys fought viciously to discredit the evidence, and Vincent himself. They accused him of forgery and branded him a rabble-rouser sowing chaos, but Vincent stood firm, his voice unwavering as he challenged the council to confront the ugly reality. Will you continue to turn a blind eye while the Kobali grind entire civilizations beneath their boot heels? Or will you finally take a stand, as the guardians of peace and justice you claim to be? Many council members shifted uncomfortably in their seats, unable to meet Vincent's piercing gaze. When the session finally concluded, the council was bitterly divided. Some demanded harsh sanctions against the Kobali. Others insisted the status quo must be preserved, lest the galactic order crumble. The dispute raged on, unresolved. Vincent found himself a galactic celebrity and pariah overnight. To trillions of the downtrodden and oppressed, he was a hero shining a light on their suffering. 
but to the powerful and privileged, Vincent was a dangerous iconoclast, threatening to destabilize a system that had served them well for eons. Amidst the Fuhrer, Vincent received an unexpected message on his private comm channel. The sender was anonymous, their voice disguised. You're on the right track, Mr. Adams, the mysterious figure said, but you've barely scratched the surface. If you truly wish to uncover the depths of the Kobali's crimes and the rot at the heart of the Galactic Council itself, meet me at the attached coordinates, come alone and tell no one. The truth must remain hidden for now if we hope to bring the guilty to justice. Vincent stared at the message, his mind racing. Was this a trap, or a genuine offer of aid from an unlikely ally? Regardless of the risk, Vincent knew he had to pursue this lead. The stakes were too high to turn back now. The human replied to the message with a single word. Agreed. Vincent's heart raced as he approached the secluded meeting spot, his mind spinning with the implications of the mysterious message. As he stepped into the shadowy room, he found himself face to face with two unexpected allies, a battle-hardened human soldier named Marcus and a fierce-looking Kobali with a scar across his reptilian features, who introduced himself as Zahn. Marcus spoke first, his voice gruff. Glad you could make it, kid. We've got a lot to discuss and not much time. Zahn nodded, his eyes glinting. Vincent, what you said about the Kobali, you're right, but it goes deeper than even you realize. The defector revealed a shocking truth. The Kobali's relentless aggression was orchestrated by a secret cabal within their own government, led by none other than Horus himself. This shadowy group had been covertly funding pirate raids and staging false flag attacks, using the chaos to justify their brutal conquests. All the while they ruthlessly silenced any dissent within the Kabali ranks. Marcus leaned forward. Zahn and I have been working to expose these bastards, but we need your help, Vincent. We need more evidence to bring them down and rally the other races to our cause. Vincent clenched his jaw, a fire igniting in his eyes. He knew he couldn't turn his back on this, not with so much at stake. I'm in, whatever it takes. The trio quickly hatched a plan to infiltrate a heavily guarded Kobali military installation, aiming to steal data files that could blow the Cabal's schemes wide open. As they launched their daring raid, Vincent's heart pounded in his ears. Alarms blared as they raced through the sterile corridors, dodging plasma bolts from Kobali security forces. Vincent's quick thinking saved them more than once, his improvisational skills earning nods of respect from his battle-tested companions. In the server room, Marcus's fingers flew across the console, transferring the precious data. Got it, let's move! But their escape was cut off by a squad of heavily armed Kabali troops. Marcus and Zahn fought like demons, their weapons flashing. Vincent dove for cover, his mind racing. Then he spotted it, a control panel for the room's blast doors. With a burst of speed, he lunged for the panel and slammed his fist on the emergency lockdown button. The doors slid shut with a resounding clang, sealing the Kabali troops on the other side. Quick thinking, kid, Marcus grunted as they sprinted for their waiting ship. But their troubles were far from over. As they blasted away from the installation, a swarm of Kabali fighters appeared on their tail, peppering their shields with laser fire. Zahn wrestled with the controls, trying to evade their pursuers in a dense asteroid field. The ship shuddered as a volley of shot slammed into their rear deflectors. Shields at twenty percent, Marcus shouted over the chaos. We can't take much more of this. Vincent's eyes locked on the weapons console. In a flash of inspiration, he leapt into the gunner's seat and swung the ship's rear cannons to bear on the asteroids behind them. With a fierce battle cry, he opened fire, blasting the space rocks into a storm of debris that engulfed the Kobali fighters. The enemy ships vanished from the scanners, lost in the maelstrom of shattered stone. Marcus let out a whooping cheer as they rocketed away to safety, the stolen data secured in their hold. As the adrenaline rush faded, Vincent found a new sense of purpose burning in his heart. This was only the beginning, he knew. With Marcus and Zahn by his side, he would stop at nothing to bring the Kobali Cabal to justice and unravel the web of lies that had ensnared the galaxy for too long. In the days that followed, 
The trio pored over the stolen files, piecing together the scope of the conspiracy. The evidence was damning. Records of secret meetings, illicit financial transactions, and coded communications that laid bare the cabal's insidious machinations. Vincent's mind spun with the implications. This went beyond mere warmongering. The Kobali Cabal's actions threatened to destabilize the entire galactic order, plunging countless worlds into chaos and conflict. They had to be stopped, no matter the cost. As Vincent, Marcus, and Zahn poured over the stolen data, their eyes widened with each damning revelation. The files contained detailed plans for the assassination of key leaders from various alien races, all orchestrated by Horus and his Cabal. If successful, these killings would throw the galaxy into chaos, leaving a power vacuum for the Kabali to fill. This is bigger than we ever imagined, Marcus said, his voice tight with tension. If they pull this off, the Kabali will be unstoppable. Vincent nodded grimly. We have to act fast. I'll contact my allies in the Galactic Academy and the Council. We need to get this evidence in front of them ASAP. As Vincent worked his contacts arranging a clandestine meeting, an uneasy feeling settled in Zahn's gut. He pulled Marcus aside, his voice low and urgent. Something's not right. The Kabali security protocols in these files, they're too easy to crack. It's like they wanted us to find this. Marcus frowned, the implications sinking in. A trap! Before Zahn could respond, the door to their hideout exploded inward. Kobali commandos stormed in, plasma rifles blazing. Marcus shoved Vincent down as a barrage of shots scorched the air above their heads. Ambush! Zahn roared, returning fire with his own weapon. The trio fought desperately, but the Kobali had the advantage of numbers and surprise. Marcus cried out as a plasma bolt seared through his shoulder, sending him crumpling to the ground. Zahn leapt to his defense, only to be overwhelmed by a swarm of commandos. They dragged the snarling Kobali away, even as he kicked and struggled. Vincent, heart-pounding, knew they were out of options. He grabbed the wounded Marcus and hauled him toward the rear exit, the stolen data clutched tight in his free hand. Plasma bolts sizzled past as they fled down the seedy space station's grimy corridors. We need to get off this station, Marcus gasped, his face pale with pain. Vincent's mind raced. He knew these twisting passageways from his days running illicit errands as a cash-strapped student. With a burst of desperate inspiration, he guided them into a maintenance shaft, sealing the hatch behind them moments before their pursuers thundered past. Hours later, huddled in the cramped hold of a smuggler's ship Vincent had bribed for passage, the two humans took stock of their grim situation. They've got Zahn, and now they know we're onto them, Marcus said, his voice heavy with pain and exhaustion. Vincent clenched his fist around the data drive. Then we don't have any time to waste. I have to get this evidence out there, and we're going to make Horus pay for what he's done. A plan began to take shape in Vincent's mind, reckless and daring. He would infiltrate the Kobali embassy on the council's homeworld, posing as a diplomat. While he distracted Horus and his guards, Marcus would lead their few remaining allies in an all-out assault on the compound. Amid the chaos, Vincent would confront Horus and force him to confess his crimes before the eyes of the galaxy. It was a desperate gamble, but with the fate of billions hanging in the balance, Vincent knew there was no other choice. Zahn's sacrifice would not be in vain. As Vincent strode into the Kobali embassy, his heart raced beneath his immaculate diplomat's robes. The stolen data, now broadcast ready, felt like a lead weight in his pocket. The Kobali guards eyed him suspiciously, but Vincent's forged credentials and smooth talking won him entry into the compound. In the ambassador's lavish receiving room, Vincent found himself face to face with Horus at last. The Kobali's eyes glittered with malice as he sized up the lone human. What brings you here, Vincent Adams? Horus asked, his voice dripping with false cordiality. Vincent smiled thinly. I come bearing a message of great importance, Ambassador. One the whole galaxy needs to hear. With that, he activated the concealed camera drone on his collar, streaming his feed to every corner of the galaxy. 
At the same moment, the sound of explosions and blaster fire echoed from outside as Marcus and their allies launched their attack. Horace's eyes widened, then narrowed with rage as he realized he'd been outplayed. Vincent held up the data drive, his voice ringing with righteous anger. Horus, I accuse you of crimes against the galactic community, of plotting to assassinate leaders and plunge us all into war for your own twisted gain. How do you answer these charges? The Kabali's answer was a wordless roar of fury. He lunged at Vincent, talons outstretched. Vincent met him head-on, grappling with the enraged alien. They crashed through the elegant furnishings, trading savage blows. Horus was stronger, faster. But Vincent fought with the desperate strength of a man with everything to lose. He slammed his fist into the Kobali's jaw, feeling the satisfying crunch of bone. But Horus barely seemed to feel it. His talons raked across Vincent's chest, shredding flesh and drawing blood. They were locked in a deadly embrace, neither giving ground. The fate of the galaxy would be decided here, in this moment, by the strength of a human's will against the ruthless might of a Kobali warlord. Vincent and Horus grappled fiercely, toppling furniture as they battered each other with savage blows. Horus's claws raked Vincent's flesh, drawing blood, but the human fought back with desperate ferocity, hammering punches into the Kobali's scaly hide. You're finished, human, Horus snarled. Your pathetic rebellion ends here. Never, Vincent roared back, slamming his knee into Horus's gut. The Kobali doubled over, wheezing. Vincent pressed his advantage, battering his foe with relentless strikes. Horus reeled under the onslaught, his strength flagging. With a final titanic effort, Vincent seized the Kabali ambassador and hurled him across the room. Horus crashed into a bank of computers, sparks flying. He slumped to the floor, defeated. Vincent stood over his vanquished enemy, chest heaving, blood dripping from his wounds. It's over, Horus. Your crimes are exposed. You've lost. But Horus only laughed, a mad gurgling sound. You think you've won, human? You've destroyed nothing. With a final snarl of defiance, the Kabali slammed his fist down on a hidden control panel. A klaxon blared, red lights flashing. Self-destruct sequence initiated, a computerized voice announced. Detonation in T-minus sixty seconds. No! Vincent lunged at Horus, but the Kabali was already gone, fleeing the doomed embassy. Vincent staggered, his injuries taking their toll, but he couldn't stop now. He had to escape. Sixty seconds. Vincent ran, ignoring the pain lancing through his body. Fifty seconds. He vaulted over debris, the building shaking itself apart around him. Forty seconds. He could see daylight ahead, taste freedom. Thirty seconds. Almost there. Twenty. Ten. Vincent hurled himself through the embassy doors, landing hard on the pavement outside. Five. Four. Three. He crawled, desperate. Two. One. The world erupted in fire and thunder as the embassy exploded, the shockwave hurling Vincent like a ragdoll. He skidded across the ground, ears ringing, vision blurred. Darkness reached up to claim him. When Vincent awoke, it was to a galaxy reborn. News of Horace's treachery and the Kobali's deceptions had spread like wildfire. The Galactic Council, faced with incontrovertible proof of the Kobali's crimes, had unanimous moved to condemn them. Harsh sanctions crippled the Kobali Empire, their influence shattered. But the war's scars ran deep. Though the Kobali threat was broken, many races still viewed each other with suspicion, wondering what other plots might lurk in the shadows. The galaxy stood on a razor's edge between peace and chaos. At the eye of this storm stood Vincent, the human who had exposed the truth. To some he was a hero, a champion of justice, to others a dangerous radical who had upset the ancient order. Billions now looked to him, wondering what he would do next. The newly elected council president herself made the offer. Vincent Adams, we need your help to forge a lasting peace between the races. Will you serve as our special envoy to rebuild the bonds of trust and cooperation? Vincent hesitated, the weight of the galaxy on his shoulders. He thought of all he had lost, Marcus cut down defending the truth. Zahn sacrificed to the cause. 
and the still unknown traitor in their midst, a festering wound that haunted him. But he couldn't turn away, not now when so much hung in the balance. Vincent squared his shoulders, meeting the President's gaze. I accept. As Vincent took his place on the council stage, a sea of alien faces staring up at him in anticipation, he knew his trials were far from over. The Kabali were broken, but other dangers would rise to take their place. Vincent would have to be the galaxy's watchdog, ever vigilant against the forces that threatened peace. The scars on his body would heal, but the scars on his soul, the losses he carried with him, those would never fade. They would drive him forward in the battles to come. Vincent stepped up to the podium, the eyes of trillions upon him. He took a deep breath, ready to shape the galaxy's future. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.